adds color and beauty to life. It's another amazing way of showcasing, recording, and just telling our experiences and identities. Have you ever wondered how much and to what extent African artists are celebrated and recognized in the world? I'll tell you. We're not just drawing, painting, and sculpting in basements and tiny rooms and putting them on social media. We, African visual artists, are doing a great job showcasing our heritage, culture, identities, and so much more. Now, that list is very impressive. But first up is Tracy Rose. One, two, one, two, one, two. For the time being, we will maintain radio silence. You can't just be an artist. I didn't study like seven years to just be an artist. Tracy Rose is an artist who explores cultural stereotypes imposed on Africans, women, and African women. She plays around with photography and video installations based on performance. A South African who has become an international sensation with multiple layers to her art and her life as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to hear are not necessarily the views of the artist. Her art has been defined as a complex manner in which an artist inserts her body into her work of art, embracing multiple layers of meaning inherent in the world. True art, if you ask me. Rose's art, which is sharp-edged, profoundly political, and anarchic. The way I was educated in art, was that art is a political weapon. Has actually received a lot of local and international recognition and exhibitions. You need to see one of them. It's amazing. Interesting. Tracy Rose is one of my favorites, and she's beginning a new generation of soul artists. I like her because of the soul and African identity she brings to her pieces. Urgh! You definitely need to check out one of Tracy Rose's pieces. You can start with Anika Titled. Abdullahi Dirasuba, aka Abudia, an Ivorian contemporary artist with a studio in New York in Abidjan, created in various shows with galleries in New York, London, and Barcelona, amongst others, that is. Abudia's works have been sought out and purchased by influential art collectors, collectors like Charles Sashi, Jean Pigazzi, and Frank Cohen. Unlike many other artists who fled during the Ivorian Civil War, Abudia decided to stay and continue working. He actually worked in a studio right next to the Gulf Hotel, which was president of Tara's headquarters at the time. He would hide in his cellar during the frequent riots and shootings, visualizing what was happening outside. And when things calmed down, he would go upstairs and paint. His goal was to create a record of Cote d'Ivoire's recent history. His trademark style, Nucci, has been described as a tribute to the essence of dreams and language. <sighs> Ghanaian sculptor, El Anachwi, who spent majority of his career in Nigeria, is popularly known for his bottle top installation, which is basically thousands of aluminum and copper wires transformed into a cloth-like wall sculpture. Anatri started sculpting and wood carving because he wanted to keep alive the African traditions he grew up with. Isn't that beautiful? To draw connections between consumption, waste, and the environment. Drinks were among the items that Europe brought to Africa in order to start trading with uh, Africa. When I uh, take a bottle cap and I cut it, I just have the feeling that I'm working with uh, a material which was there at the beginning of the contact between two continents and eventually three continents, yeah. you know, because uh, the currency of drink happened to be used in paying for slaves which were brought to 
the yeah, West yeah. and they produce uh, more sugar cane for more drink and it goes back into Europe and then comes back into Africa yeah, and so on and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Between the three continents, you know, that historical uh, uh, fact, I think drink has a lot to do with it. Make that make sense. But beautiful work, and actually. Elle has won a number of awards, such as the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement in 2015. Hmm. And the Premium Imperial, which he was the first Ghanaian to win. You know why El Anachu inspires me? Because he makes beauty out of things we wouldn't ordinarily think we can. Drawing connections between waste and the environment. Beautiful. Sherry Samba, who hails from the Republic of Congo, is one of the most popular contemporary African artists known all around the globe. At the age of 16, rebellious years, Sherry found his calling after encountering artists such as Moke and Bodo when he left for Kinshasa to become a sign painter. What was I doing at the age of 16? I was fighting with my parents on who I wanted to be. Uh, okay, moving on. Sherry has over 309 paintings published. Wow! That's a lot. And apparently, each painting goes for 15,000 to 600,000 pounds. That's a lot of money. He has adapted the art of infusing text and painting into his work, and he calls it the Samba Signature. After his Magician de la Terre exhibition in Paris in 1989, which means Magicians of the World, Sherry has constantly been on the global map, having his works published and sold with local and international recognition, and also being an inspiration to young artists such as him. Benedict Chuku Kadibia Onwanwu, popularly known as Ben Onwanwu, a Nigerian painter, sculptor, and arguably the most influential African artist of the 20th century. He opened way for post-colonial multiplicity and visibility of modern African art, a legend. His fame was used to enlist support for black nationalist movement all over the world. This man has a crater named in his honor on Mercury, the planet. Yes, the planet Mercury. It's called the Owawu Crater. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. He was a recipient of very prestigious awards and amongst many is the member of the most excellent order of the British Empire. Now, aside from his arts like the bronze sculpture of Queen Elizabeth II, his portrait of the Ife princess Adetutu Ademilui Tutu is a Nigerian national icon and also symbolizes reconciliation between the government and the Biafran separatists after the Civil War. His Princess Tutu portrait went missing in 1975 and was rediscovered in 2017 in a London flat. And guess what? It was sold for 1.2 million pounds. And also, his painting, Owa Market, which showcases a market space in the Nigerian city of Owo was restored on the BBC program The Repair Shop in August 2019. Ben Owo is a household name in the home of any visual artist, painter and sculptor and he definitely left an indelible footprint. Well there you have it. We have the best and the greatest artists here in Africa. And to the new generation of phenomenal artists, I say cheers! Subscribe, like, share, please.